What's going on everybody, Bobby Bax here, and welcome to my review of episode 5 for HBO's The Last of Us. As always, if you're not caught up on the show as yet, this is your spoiler warning. Let's start with the episode title this week, Endure and Survive, one of my favourite mottos from The Last of Us franchise. It's been adopted as the main motto for the game's multiplayer, of which I've invested nearly 10 years of my life into. The phrase originates from the in-game fictional comic book series Savage Starlight, which Ellie interacts with Sam over in the episode. Endure and Survive is then used to name a trophy for the players in the game, which they unlock once they've discovered all the collectibles for comic books in the game. If last week's episode 4 was something of a setup, the start of a new story arc, then episode 5 is certainly the follow-through. It was always going to be tough for the show to directly follow the emotional highs and overall depth that came from episode 3, so co-creators Craig Mazin and Neil Druckmann instead allowed the next part of their story to take a slow burn approach, set something up in one week and let the fallout happen after. The episode picks up exactly where episode 4 leaves off, with guns in the faces of Joel and Ellie. Well, we get there eventually. The story pulls back a bit, showing us how Kansas City came to be the Kansas City we see when Joel and Ellie arrive. Their Fedra had embraced particularly fascist and abusive policies, and mentions later in the episode of rape, murder and torture, and a group led by Kathleen overthrew them. We eventually catch up with brothers Henry and Sam as they attempt to get away from the riot undetected. Eventually they meet up with a doctor, who I'll now refer to as Nostradamus. Tunnels. Why go to the trouble? You can kill yourself right here. Although we already know his fate and that Kathleen finds this room in the future. Much of the episode invests time in Henry and Sam, who we find out are on the run from Kathleen and the KCM, because Henry sold her brother out to Fedra. We learn that Sam is adorable, loves superheroes, is deaf and has leukaemia. The two communicate with one another using American Sign Language, which is actually quite helpful in a world where clickers exist. The decision to make Sam deaf, Kayvon Woodward himself is also deaf, doesn't hamper the episode at all. Thanks to Woodward's expressive face and how much emotion was delivered through his little message pad, it's the kind of change from the video game that makes me trust Mason and Druckmann more than ever. Henry believes himself to be a villain, given what he did to Kathleen's brother, but real life, and certainly as depicted in the show, there is no good or evil characters. Yet. We have these people that are doing anything to survive, or endure and survive, as the saying goes, and Henry is doing what it takes to save his brother from the illness, and accessing the medication meant sacrificing somebody else. It was a deal he was willing to take. It's an interesting point in the episode, particularly when Kathleen catches up with Henry, as there is lots of foreshadowing for what I presume will come at the end of the season. Shout out to Ish, by the way. If you know, you know. The tunnels and then the suburbs with the sniper are wonderfully adapted from the game. Granted, Joel has to fight through more hunters to get to the sniper in the game, but that wasn't necessary here, and the aftermath from the KCM arriving is just pure carnage. It reminded me a lot of World War Z, as the infected just trailblazed through all of Kathleen's army. And then there's the bloater. Again, a masterclass adaption from the game. We meet this stage of the infected much earlier in the game, but seeing it rise from the underground and rip people to pieces was weirdly satisfying. Although I did shed a tear for Jeremy Pierce, and it's the first beheading that's left me sad since poor old Ned Stark was separated at the neck. R.I.P. Perry. Seeing Joel using the bolt-action sniper to pick off the infected was great. It was taken straight from the game. But to watch it in a TV show made me wonder whether he'd have actually made his own way down there earlier to help Ellie, Sam and Henry. Despite all the infected, Kathleen and the bloater, the scariest character in this was probably the little girl Clicker, who contortioned her way to Ellie and then ultimately saw off Kathleen. R.I.P. Kathleen. But we're not done there, are we, the last of us? Oh no. The awesome foursome make it out of the near impossible situation by the skin of their teeth before Sam secretly reveals to Ellie that he's actually being bitten. And she tries, and fails, to cure him. I'm not quite sure whether the character of Ellie actually believed that doing this was going to cure Sam, or whether it was just pure hope. But what comes next is far more traumatising than the idea of monstrous creatures roaming the planet, a moment that anyone who has people in their lives that they hold dear would feel horrified to even imagine. After discovering his brother has been infected, in a split-second decision, Henry shoots him dead, before realising the gravity of what he's done and turning the gun on himself. The past five episodes of The Last of Us have made it clear that the drama is far more than a show solely about the impact that monstrous, ever-spreading creatures can have on the Earth. It highlights the power of human connection to a greater degree than many of us may have anticipated before watching it, from Joel and Ellie's growing bond to Bill and Frank literally finding love in a hopeless place for 16 years 
before dying peacefully in each other's arms. Henry's love for Sam is so palpable that he was willing to make an enemy of an entire city's population, forever placing a target on their backs. So to watch him shoot his own brother dead is stomach churning beyond belief. Lamar's delivery of that line after Henry pulls the trigger and watches the blood spill out onto the floor is utterly heartbreaking. So quiet, so shaky, yet so powerful and memorable. His eyes glazed over moments after the gunshot, struggling to fathom what's just happened. An apocalyptic drama inevitably means that a lot of people will die, good as well as bad. Yet as is so often true when watching the news, a small-scale tragedy can hit harder than a mass casualty event, especially when it involves an innocent. Whilst the scene is taken directly from the game, a brief reminder that TV shows and games are different animals. Simply put, killing a child in a TV drama is always dicey, because those moments strike the audience in a unique and unsettling way. The episode speaks to the fearlessness of the storytelling by producers Craig Mazin and Neil Druckmann presenting a stark demonstration, if one was still needed at this point, that the stakes in the show's world are as stark as they come. Whilst this isn't the first post-apocalyptic zombie-orientated TV show to infect and ultimately kill a child, cue Sophia and The Walking Dead, The Last of Us has demonstrated even more impressive range in establishing a strong showcase for guest stars, including Melanie Linsky. Yet as Maisie noted in the video that followed the episode, these subplots also inform and impact the relationship between Joel and Ellie, which was evident in their unspoken exchange at the end following Henry's decision to end his own life. The emotional wallop the show has delivered helps explain its popularity and social media footprint, inspiring even the sceptical to tune in, and why the term zombie drama, while accurate, is probably too reductive. It's unfathomable to think what could have been going through Henry's mind when he realised that he'd killed his own brother. No one with any loved ones, whether friends or family, would wish for anything less than to place themselves in his shoes. It's an atrocity that no one should ever have to endure, and a devastating one to witness, even when told through the lens of a fictional story. The truth is that there are terrors in the real world, and in fiction that are far more dreadful than blood-curdling monsters. While episode 3 delivered an unexpectedly heartwarming turn of events, a love story to remind viewers that there can still be hope when the rest of the world seems like it's on fire, episode 5 was a poignant reminder that horrors can also be lurking in unlikely places.